Do it again. Uh oh. The security feature for the machine completely shut down. Couldn't do anything. So I was forced to leave a, a, a voicemail on the management information service department explaining my predicament and ever humbly asking for help. Well, I made me wait a couple hours, I guess, to teach me a lesson. And then a technician who knows he makes far less than I do came in. He said, I can't believe it. You're the assistant to the controller. You can't remember a password. Sue me, please. Anyway, he, uh, a lot of rapid keystrokes, you know, when the screen is flashing by, but he unfroze what I had done. He said to me, look, password is between five and eight characters. You turn away, you're going to key in your password, and then you confirm it. Okay. So, I'm really rattled at this point. I mean, I really had a lot of things to do, and I thought I'd get them done. So anyway, going to grab a couple of slices for pizza, a pizza for lunch. So I had that on my mind. So I used pizza as my password. Now every 60 days you have to change your password. Well, next password I used was bagel. That seemed to work out okay. So every time I had to uh, change my password, I used a different food item. And that little episode made me realize how important food is in my life. Indeed, my family name of Zaharakos comes from the Greek word for sugar, Zahar. And any time somebody meets me for the first time and says, oh, you're Greek? I say, no. I'm as American as spinach pie. <laughs> I mean, I've grown, literally grown, from being one of seven small children living with my parents and my grandparents in a small railroad flat in Brooklyn over a laundromat, searching and refrigerated for something to eat, and only coming away with the makings of a ketchup sandwich. <laughs> now, I have to watch my waistline, I have to, you know, count calories. Anything made out of chocolate is my mortal enemy because I just keep going back for more. I've even known the agonies of the D word. Diet. Well now, or maybe it's about time to the real food story. One of my first, my father's first jobs, I'm told, was, his, was at Harry's restaurant in Brooklyn. Harry always wore a bow tie, was known never to take off his jacket or to step in the hot kitchen. His post was a cash register. My father's name was Stavros, which was Americanized to Steve. He became one of the cooks and worked long hours, six and sometimes seven days a week. He would naturally take his meal break during a slow time of the day. Now there was a certain unspoken etiquette at that time that was recognized by eating establishments that ranged from just small coffee shops with stools to the most elaborate fancy restaurants with tablecloths. And that was that the help was supposed to eat well. The only thing they had to pay for if they smoked were their cigarettes. Now, my father quickly developed on this mistake, probably because he came from a village where meat was scarce. Now, when my father first started to regularly sit down for a steak dinner in a booth just outside the kitchen, Harry would, uh, would inspect what he was eating and he would walk by. He said, steak all the time. He was horrified. And he would say my father with a finger wagging, Steve, steak no good for you, Steve. Steak no good for you. Obviously, obviously Harry was a bottom line man before the turn came into vote. <laughs> now, my father tried to ignore this admonition, even though he knew that the restaurant business was not a democratic institution. institution. Also in short time, my father started to have company during his late afternoon meal break. A young woman named Aniota, Bertha in English, who eventually became my mother. Now, when Harry would scold my father about his steak eating habits, the stakes were much higher. <laughs> my father needed to keep his job just as much as he wanted to impress Aniota. Now, let me tell you a little Harry's restaurant secret. 
One of the perennials and many of us forgetting is a cheap dish. It was also pre-cooked. When you needed it, you just grabbed a handful, put it in a strainer, a pot of boiling water that was always kept on the stove. This spaghetti became hot in a minute, ready to accompany meatballs or clams or other sauce. Almost overnight, my father started having a strange addiction to spaghetti. Every day, he would keep a mountain of it on his plate with butter and cheese. Now, when Harry would spy what he was eating, Oh, he couldn't contain himself. He was so happy. He saw the spaghetti. Oh, he would nod, walk by and nod pleasantly and s s exclaim, Oh, Steve, Steve, spaghetti good for you, Steve. Spaghetti <laughs> good for you. When Harry was safely back at the cash register for chin, my father, with a wink in his eye to Paniota, would lift off the spaghetti with his fork and enjoy the steak that he had been underneath. I'm just as sure that remember none of his seven kids were around then that he also doubly enjoyed the company by the Yorta too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.